Fiona Tracy is always on time, to the point of it being suspicious. It's possible she's been using her degree in applied physics and electronics to manipulate space-time to her benefit. But however she does it, she's also making sure industrial networks can move lots of data and have it arrive on time. And she's with us today to talk about what Analog Devices is working on to enable Industry 4.0. Welcome to Tech Chats, Fiona. Thanks, Chris. Uh, looking forward to chatting with you today. Let's just start off with how industrial connectivity plays into the enablement of Industry 4.0. Yes, absolutely. So I guess, you know, when we look at in the industrial automation market, there's the trends, you know, driving the need for increased connectivity. We hear all the buzz around Industry 4.0 and the promise, you know, of changing the way we create products thanks to digitization of manufacturing and, and process facilities. And we've seen the benefits of automation over many decades, but now we want to try to fuel these systems with enhanced data, machine learning, artificial intelligence. And today across, you know, factories and process facilities, there's just a host of, you know, automation systems and edge devices, and they're just not connected or they're very limited connectivity. So if we want to see this vision come to reality, um, you know, of all our devices being interconnected, being able to communicate, having all this data to analyze and interpret and to add, you know, auxiliary intelligence across our factory floors, then, you know, we need to evolve our connectivity. Um, and in industrial connectivity is what will awaken this you know, reality. It will improve our utilization in our plants, improve productivity. It will drive new streams of data, which enable flexibility um, and increase quality. And that's all around, you know, towards mass customization and batch sizes of one. And of course, you know, mindful of, you know, reducing our waste and, and our energy footprint. So the benefits of Industry 4.0 are very clear, and this is all enabled through the connectivity network. So how do industrial networks need to change to make this a reality? Yes, exactly. And, you know, in enabling this, this vision of having all of these sensors, actuators across the factory floor, even those in remote hazardous locations and having them interconnected, it's, it's not possible today with our existing infrastructure. And the other issue is, of course, that, you know, a lot of the networks we have today, they're strained under the burden of, you know, increased traffic, the amount of excess traffic, and they're creating these bottlenecks uh, for data. Today, I've tried to outline, you know, three challenges that we must try to address. And the first one is around this converged network. So if you look at a factory's connectivity network, it starts out with our IT infrastructure that we're all used to engaging with. And then it moves to our control network, or our operating technology, which controls the machines and robots throughout the plant. And we need to enable seamless connectivity between those two layers, between our management systems at the IT level and the OT level for the control networks. And we call this vertical integration. And the real driver here is to enable data and information generated at the edge to move through the control system and into the management systems. And that's where it can be used, you know, to increase our asset utilization and the flexibility and all of the stuff we, we just spoke about. So secondly, if we talk about interoperability. So today we have a huge challenge that various networks or manufacturing cells, they need to all coexist and interoperate. Um, and, you know, we need to enable seamless connectivity right down and right across the layers of, of our factory network, all the way down to the end sensors. And those are the sensors, actually, you can see in the slide on, on the uh, bottom of our triangle. So existing legacy um, equipment, you know, utilizes multiple connectivity networks, standard Ethernet, which is at the IT level. We have industrial Ethernet, which is used in some areas of the factory. But we also have lots and lots of field bus and other serial networks, 4 to 20 milliamp heart. And the issue is that all of these technologies, you know, they are they're different down to the physical transmit mechanism. And this creates that interoperability challenge. And, you know, the technologies then what we're using is we're using gateways to translate between these protocols. And this is creating pockets of information or data islands that we, we can't access. So having plant wide interoperable automation networks based on industrial Ethernet, right, for example, you know, that would just eliminate the, this problem. It would eliminate the, the, the need for these gateways because our information would start out as an Ethernet packet and traverse the network as an Ethernet packet. 
So a solution is needed uh, that would enable, you know, different manufacturing cells running different protocols to coexist and share the network. And crucially, this has to be in a way that, you know, guarantees their control traffic is not compromised because they're in the control loop of an R factory. And the answer lies in time sensitive networking. And this is, in fact, a vendor neutral a uh, real-time Ethernet standard, and it's based on IEEE 802.1 specification. And here, because all of the devices now on the network will share um, the same time, important data can be transmitted with low latency and jitter at up to a gigabit speed. And this brings you know, a new revolution in the industrial communication space. And we'll explore this in a little bit more detail later. And then if we look, I guess, at our uh, third challenge, and this is all about seamless connectivity to the edge of the network. And it's particularly true in process control environments, because here we actually lacked a physical layer standard for Ethernet that could reach the distance of, let's say, a kilometer, which is serviced today by 4 to 20 milliamp. So a recent uh, IEEE 802.3 CG standard just got approved actually last November. And this enables uh, Ethernet connectivity, you know, to sensors and actuators deployed in, in harsh environments and enables Ethernet connectivity over single twisted pair cabling. And traditional Ethernet really only reaches, you know, it's around 100 meters. Now we're talking about kilometer and that's the key differentiator here, distance, uh, which is, is needed in that process control environment to get down to these sensors which are deployed in hazardous locations. Now, explain this example that you have of what a factory looks like today and how it will change to bring all of these edge to cloud benefits. Yes, absolutely. So um, I've picked today um, a motion control or a factory automation use case, and I've tried to create an infographic here which shows some of those layers that we talked about uh, previously. So at the top in the gray, we have our IT infrastructure, uh, you know, where our cloud or management systems reside. Um, And then we're trying to show here the desire to connect the edge nodes. So it could be things like conveyors, pulleys, machines, robots, and all the things detailed on on the bottom of our infographic. Connect them all the way seamlessly up to the enterprise cloud. Now we can break the factory into, you know, three layers. We have the control network at the top uh, in the dark blue, the field, which is in the lighter blue, and then the edge, which is the purple at the bottom. And our goal is always to enable seamless connectivity from the cloud through the control network and down to these field nodes and ultimately to the edge. Now, in the case of connected motion, which we have here, they, you know, it's, it's a real time uh, application. It runs a lot over the Ethercap protocol today. And hence, we have a dominance of 100 megabits and industrial Ethernet, or indeed, as you can see in the slide, there's the RS-485, which is some of the blue lines. Now, often we see these networks need to run hundreds of megabits on what we're seeing as the orange lines, and they can have EtherCAT uh, running within the robot. These these robots would need to connect up to a higher control system, which might be running a a Profinet stack, for example, uh, to a motion planner. So these networks, you know, struggling, we talked about this over this increased amount of data on the network and the amount of traffic and also that interoperability challenge um, across numerous, you know, protocols. So real time Ethernet usually only happens between the master and the slave. But ADI, we've been able to demonstrate, you know, synchronization from the network master right down to the motor terminals using our FIDO 5200. And this is a two port uh, real time Ethernet switch. And these switches can be paired with any processor to handle any protocol or stack. And they support industrial Ethernet protocols today, but also some TSN features to enable this converged network and time sensitive networking that we just you know, talked about. So deterministic performance to the edges is it's, it's, it's critical really for motion control environments and time critical application robotics, because any timing mismatches uh, between accesses can result in position command errors. And we also see on the slide, we and ADI provide some physical layer solutions. So we have our ADI in 1200, uh, which is a 10100 phi 
that can be easily paired with our FIDO 5200 to give you a, a complete communication solution. So uh, ADI has also developed a reference design solution, which shows how to interconnect our ADI in 1200, 10105 with our two port FIDO switch. Um, we're also working on some complete multi-protocol software solutions, and these can be accessed as on our website and on Mazra.com. So let's now go back, Chris, to our motor control example and see where this is evolving to. Uh, with gigabit connectivity. Okay, so the desire um, is, you know, as I mentioned, as we move forward in time, is to support this need for increased bandwidth. Um, and if we look onto this slide, we see the introduction of our green links, which are our gigabit links. And these become, you know, particularly critical because in the, in the factories of the future, we're going to see more and more robots, more and more complex vision systems being utilized to monitor and increase the quality of our manufacturing, the safety of you know, our workers when they're working with these collaborative cobots. And in these scenarios, we must make sure you know, space around a robot is free for people to safely operate. And this requires more and more sensors in the environment sharing more and more information. So determinism is obviously going to be a critical requirement for alarm signals. We must be able to um, you know, stop a robot or shut down an area instantaneously. And all this is driving the need for this higher data bandwidth and deterministic real-time performance. And this is driving us towards our gigabit TSN solutions. So that's the green links that we, we mentioned there on the slide. And the, what's important is that, you know, with more and more sensors being deployed, sending more and more data up through our control network, the concept of TSN is, is critical because it, it means that, you know, you can subscribe to different streams of information and control precisely uh, when you're allow, allowing which traffic uh, on the network. So ADI is also investing uh, in this area and we have some gigabit FI solutions, the ADI N 1300, which are designed for robust operation in industrial applications. Um, and I will talk to a little bit more detail on those uh, shortly. Okay, now if a designer is going to implement this higher bandwidth, time sensitive network, what do they need to look out for? You know, so some key things when we're, we're trying to design um, an industrial communication system. And the first one is, is latency. So latency is a critical requirement for precise control uh, within, you know, like some of these robotics applications where synchronization of these signals is critical. Um, and, you know, some of the, one of the key specs we design around is network cycle time. And this is the time required by the controller uh, to both collect and in fact, update the data for all of the devices on a liner ring uh, topology. So in the factory, a lot of devices are deployed in what we call line or ring topologies. And the lower the network cycle time allows for, you know, higher application performance in these time critical communications. And the lower the latency of, let's say, our FI and our switch helps achieve, you know, minimum cycle, network cycle times. Or for a given network cycle time, you could maybe add more devices onto your network. Secondly, we talk about scalability. So I mentioned in our factory, in our motion control example, that we were at, you know, 10, 100 megabits a lot of the time today. But the ability to scale and move towards gigabit connectivity is critical because in our, in our deployments, you know, we must support gigabit switching across all devices on the network. And hence that scalability and bandwidth uh, from 10, 100 to gigabit speeds to future proof our designs. Now, low power consumption is also critical because a lot of the devices are actually deployed within sealed housing with like IP66, 67 enclosures. And these type of sealed enclosures, it's very hard to dissipate power. So we need devices that are specified for high temperature operation. And that's, you know, a major challenge when we're trying to select some of our Ethernet components because these, these housings have very poor, you know, thermal conductivity capabilities. And again, the effect of, of power consumption, like our latency example, with latency in a liner ring topology, we have uh, two ports on every device. So the effect of our latency spec or our power spec becomes doubled uh, because we have an input port and an output port. So if you reduce 
your latency by 25%, it's actually you get a, a gain on, on both the input and the output port. And the same applies with our power consumption. And of course, finally, but not uh, least, is robustness. Robustness for EMC and ESD. Because, you know, industrial systems there are in harsh factory conditions, uh, high voltage transients from production equipment and noise. You know, you can have ESD from operators or installers. So proven robust solutions uh, is a critical requirement. And these are all areas where ADI excel and have a track record in, in you know, providing high quality, robust, low latency, low power solutions. So you've mentioned the ADIN 1300 and ADIN 1200 now. Can you talk a bit more about those? Yes. So um, I mentioned we've released our ADIN 1300 and you will be delighted to know that this is actually the industry's uh, lowest latency, lowest power, smallest package, industrial grade Ethernet Phi. It operates up to 105 degrees Celsius, so it can be used in those you know, sealed enclosures for low power consumption and high temperature operation. And I mentioned the significance of latency. If you take this part, for example, it has a latency of 290 nanoseconds, which is the sum of the TX and the RX. And again, you know, we're talking about industry leading specifications. Now, I mentioned ESD um, and EMC robustness and the slide details the extensive testing ADI has actually done on these solutions uh, to the same standards that industrial equipment themselves would test to. And this is all about proving the capability of the technology, but also helping our customers, you know, design systems and reduce development effort because, you know, by selecting uh, these components, you won't run into any issues, so you're reducing your development risk and your time to market. And we've also the complementary product, which is the ADIN 1200, which is the 10100 uh, offering, which has the same extensive uh, robustness testing, and this time it's housed in a 32 lead uh, LFCSP package, whereas our gigabit product is in a 40 lead. You probably know better than just about anybody. So what's coming up in this evolution to Industry 4.0? So I guess we, we are seeing lots of this coming to pass already. We're seeing the deployment of gigabit technology uh, across um, factory factory networks. And TSM, you know, the, while a lot of the standard has already been developed, there's still a lot of work ongoing with TSM. But ADI are investing in some leading solutions in that area. So watch this space, I guess, for uh, some new technology. Uh, with our brand, we recently released our ADI Cronus portfolio. And it's all about, you know, enabling the industrial connectivity of the future to the edge, from the edge to the cloud and that network convergence that we, we talked about. We've brought our domain expertise and our advanced technology to the table and these are all things that our customers can look forward to uh, gaining when they leverage some of our ADI Cronus technology across physical air devices, embedded switches, and platform solutions. Thank you, Fiona. Once again, that's Fiona Tracy from Analog Devices. And if you'd like to learn more about ADI's industrial Ethernet solutions, click the links in the description or visit mauser.com. And be sure to check back soon for the next episode of Tech Chats. Mm -hmm.